Cyberpunk 2077 is a game of many highs and lows, but though it's not what millions wanted it to be, it has enough highs that make it worth a playthrough in spite of all of its issues, at least on hardware that can properly run it. There's quite a few side quests and main quests in the game where CD Projekt Red's storytelling talents shine through, and here we're going to talk about a few such quests. Obviously, there will be some spoilers ahead, so tread with caution. Did you hear that? Go on, Jack. Got a bad feeling about this. Don't lose your mind. The Delamain questline starts off in disappointingly generic fashion, with what's essentially a fetch quest that sends you to all corners of Night City. But the way that it ends more than makes up for that. The final quest, Don't Lose Your Mind, is an excellent way to cap off that story, with the quest itself culminating in a fascinating choice to be made. And no matter what choice you make, the resolution for the arc is a satisfying one. That which was divided has become one. It's time to go home. Home, you said. I no longer belong in this city. I find even this conversation difficult. Pyramid Song Judy is easily one of the best, most endearing characters in Cyberpunk 2077, and fittingly enough, the final mission in her personal arc is one that stands out in memory. Rather than confounding you with a dilemma or throwing you into a crazy action sequence, Pyramid Song instead sees V and Judy going scuba diving into an old part of Night City drowned deep underwater. It's hauntingly beautiful and stands out as one of those moments in the game that comes close to delivering on Cyberpunk's lofty pre-launch promises. Riders on the Storm V's growing bond with Pan Am and her band of Aldecaldos is one of the highlights of Cyberpunk 2077's story, and Riders on the Storm is a crucial part of that arc. From learning more about Pan Am and Saul's complicated relationship, to the excellent mission design on display when you rescue Saul from behind enemy lines, to the concluding act of the mission that sees V, Pan Am, and Saul hiding out in an abandoned house amidst a sandstorm and having a silent conversation. This mission constantly moves from one memorable beat to another. The Hunt River is yet another solid character in the memorable cast of Cyberpunk 2077, and The Hunt is far and away one of the best missions in his questline. It's a long mission and one that hits multiple notes. River's personal struggles, his complicated family dynamics, the hard-boiled investigation of where his nephew is, the actual rescue itself, and the horrifying realization of what he was put through in captivity, that it manages to successfully hit all those notes makes it one of the most varied and memorable missions in the game. Heroes Heroes is yet another quest that stands out purely because of strong writing and solid character moments. It's a quest that is dedicated completely to remembering the loss of Jackie early on in the game, and the way Cyberpunk 2077 handles that deserves a lot of plaudits. It never feels too on the nose. It constantly peppers in character development for the likes of Misty, and it gives you a cool bike to call your own for free. Given all that, it's hard not to like what it has to offer. Coin Operated Boy it's a real shame this coin-operated boy is a quest that a huge number of Cyberpunk 2077 players will likely miss, because it's one of the best quests in the entire game. It's not too long, it doesn't have any major narrative implications, it's not even the most action-packed mission you'll play, but it's just so wonderfully weird. A rescue mission that is doomed to fail, for a sentient vending machine no less. Well, sign us up. Machine Gun on paper, Machine Gun sounds like one of the least interesting side missions ever. You chance upon a corpse and pick up a machine gun, and that's literally all there is to it. But Skippy the Machine Gun is no ordinary weapon. It's an incredibly powerful gun that automatically shoots enemies in the head anytime you fire it when it's in stone cold killer mode. At least for 50 kills, that is. Either way, getting your hands on Skippy and saving those 50 kills until you get to the final missions of the game is a good idea. Big in Japan. As far as the larger narrative of Cyberpunk 2077 is concerned, Big in Japan is a rather inessential quest, but we still wouldn't recommend skipping it. It manages to hold its own thanks to a solid stealth encounter, or combat encounter depending on how you play. 
Meanwhile, not only does it end with a pretty sweet reward in an epic tier katana, it also has one of the best secrets in the game that fans of The Office will surely appreciate. Chippin' In Johnny Silverhand is a major presence throughout all of Cyberpunk 2077, and a character that big deserves an excellent quest dedicated to him. Chippin' In is that quest where Johnny is concerned. It's a quest that succeeds on multiple levels, from solid combat and stealth to cool rewards, including Johnny's old gear and his old Porsche, to an excellently written conversation between himself and V to cap things off and advance their relationship in a truly meaningful way. So that's how it is. Nothing here at all. What did you expect? Headstone, flag, and flowers? No, I, I don't know. A marker, something, anything. We'll figure something out. Dream On. No quest in Cyberpunk 2077 captures the systemic corruption of Night City better than Dream On. The entire Jefferson questline is a fascinating one, but Dream On touches heights that few other quests in this game do. Slowly unraveling the mystery of how corporations are messing with Jefferson's head, quite literally, is one of the most captivating plot points in the game. Well, I'll give them more than they bargained for. Same with your readies. Take care, V. Good luck. And good night. So, thoughts? Hmm, somehow I doubt it's people who are behind this. So aliens? Very funny. You're too young to remember this, but not so long ago, people talked about rogue AIs prowling cyberspace. Pisces. Judy and V go head-to-head -head against the Tiger Claws in this quest, with Judy's quest for righting the wrong of Evelyn's death the best she can coming to a head. Pisces isn't a particularly long quest, but it definitely packs a punch, from sneaking into a highly secure area to making choices that will determine the fate of not only Clouds, but also V's relationship with Judy. The Heist as the mission to conclude Cyberpunk 2077's first act and usher players into the bulk of its story, the heist has a lot riding on it, but it does pretty much everything it sets out to do in confident fashion. Breaking into Yorinobu Arasaka's penthouse, witnessing major narrative revelations, the death of a major character, fighting and sneaking through a building that's swarming with enemies. The heist is absolutely packed, and it's a thrill ride from beginning to end. Leave it to me. Play it safe. Takamura is probably one of the best characters in Cyberpunk 2077, so any quest that puts the spotlight on him is aces in our book. But Play It Safe has a lot of other things going for it as well. On top of being a crucial piece in the game's larger narrative, it's also really well designed. Systemically taking out the Arasaka snipers as you sneak your way through their security during a parade serves as an excellent backdrop, while the boss fight against Oda is also a spectacular way to finish things up. Belly of the Beast Depending on what choices you make in the final missions of Cyberpunk 2077, there's a good chance that you never even play this mission, but it's definitely one worth playing through. Storming the Arasaka building with the Aldecaldos by your side is as dramatic as you want it to be, complete with furious firefights and unexpected narrative moments, including some heartbreaking deaths. Meanwhile, there's the boss fight against Atom Smasher, which thankfully is not exclusive to this quest, which is suitably excellent. I promised to kill Silverhand once. Gonna let you in on a little secret. Johnny, he's here with us. Now he can't talk, but I can feel him under my skin. In the end, gotcha. Silverhand triumphs. I Walk the Line Unlike most other missions we've talked about in this feature, I Walk the Line earns its spot on this list purely because of how excellently designed it is from a gameplay perspective. 
Your mileage on the Voodoo Boys and animals-related story stuff may vary, but the excellent stealth, level design, and divergent gameplay on display here is some of the best you will experience in all of Cyberpunk 2077. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.